Uh, good afternoon, students. So I'm hoping that you're all having a great afternoon and welcome to week one of um, the fall semester class. So um, how's everyone doing in this class so far? Any questions? So in this video or in this class, for this first session, we're gonna cover the week one quiz. So you guys should first study this Zoom session or watch this Zoom session first before you take your, your week one quiz, because we're gonna go over the week one quiz uh, during this session. So this is like a, a quiz prep session, if you will. And then of course, if you have any questions about your uh, you know, papers, uh, you're gonna be writing a paper also. So I'm going to start recording. Hold on, let me turn on the recorder because usually I do this earlier and the recorder's not working. Hello, uh, your, your name is not showing. It just says Samsung. So I guess that's your name, right? Samsung? <laughs> no, it's not. It's Bernstein Miller. Bernstein Miller. I knew your name wasn't Samsung. Okay. Welcome <laughs> to class, Bernstein. Thank, and, thank you. And uh, Kayla, how are you doing? Good, oh, thank you. How are you? Wow, I don't know how people can drive and be on Zoom at the same time. <laughs> what about you, Ashley? How are you doing? Everybody? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. What about you, Sasha? How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? And Derek, how are you doing? I guess that means Derek is okay. You're on mute, by the way. Just so I'm, you know. I'm good. That's good. Okay. So you have any does anyone have any questions about the class so far? No. no questions? All right. So I without any further ado, I will start my week one quiz one. Um, you know, we're gonna go over grammar. So we're gonna be going over English grammar. And so this week we're going to uh, uh, go over parts of speech. What is a subject and a verb in a sentence? Verb tenses, subject verb agreement. Then we're gonna take the week one practice quiz. So make sure you can score 100% on the practice quiz before you take the actual quiz in your Canvas classroom. Then we're gonna go over the week two forum, that's next week's forum. And then we'll go over the essay one narrative essay. So let's go over the grammar test first. So study this section carefully because the answers to the practice quiz are embedded. Hold on. Okay. The uh, answers to the practice quiz are embedded in these grammar concept explanations. Memorize these sentences because these sentences are on your week one quiz. So we're going to go over the parts of speech. So everybody probably learned all of this in second grade is my guess, right? Second grade. What is a common noun, plural noun, proper noun? Do you remember second? Does anyone remember second grade when you were eight years old? I don't think so. It seems like several lifetimes ago, huh? Anyway, so a common noun. So a common noun is a person, place, or thing. And so book, river, and table are all examples of common nouns. A plural noun means more than one person, place, or thing. So in other words, more than one book is a plural noun, books, rivers, tables. A proper noun, names, titles, names of people, places, and things. Proper nouns are usually capitalized. King James, Uncle Steve, Aunt Janet, Ronald Reagan, French people, Chinese people. So ethnicities, uh, New York, Chicago, France, all of those are all proper nouns because they are names of people. Also President of the United States, King George, uh, that sort of thing. Any kind of name like Kayla C. I'm just looking at the, the charts. And I know Samsung is not a name, but it is a proper noun. So all of your names are all proper nouns. And so a common noun is when you have a person, place, or thing. In other words, if I just say the uncle is, uh, I have many aunts and uncles. So that's a person. So therefore, that's a common noun. If I say Uncle John is walking into the building, then it becomes a proper noun. So that's the difference between a common noun and a proper noun. Is if I just say uncle, it's just a common noun. If I say Uncle John, suddenly it becomes capitalized. And you don't always have to capitalize uncle, especially if it's in the middle of a sentence. So let's start with a quiz question. 
Which one is a noun? Ran, river, or lumpy? Of course, the answer is right there. So it's river because this is a thing. What part of speech is ran? Let's see if anyone can remember. We haven't gone over it yet, so don't feel bad. It's a, it's, it's, it states an action. So what part of speech states an action? I run, I speak, I listen, uh, I lie down, uh, I write a paper, or I write. So what, what part of speech would be ran? Nobody remembers? Verb. Verb. So, verb. Yeah, what about lumpy? She sleeps on a lumpy mattress. It always modifies a noun. We're going to go over this later. In a later in a later lesson, this lesson so far just goes over nouns, so you don't have to worry about verbs and adjectives. But it's upcoming. So anyway, in this question, which one is a noun? River, because river is a thing. Therefore, it is a common noun. Janet earned first place in the poetry competition. What type of noun is the underlying word? Is it a plural noun, proper noun, or a co or a common noun? And because it's a name of someone and it's capitalized, that's known as a proper noun. My aunt makes the best chocolate cake. What type of noun is the underlying word? This is a common noun because it doesn't name Aunt Jane. It just says aunt. Therefore, it's a common noun. What is a pronoun? A pronoun replaces a noun. A pronoun must agree with the noun it replaces, antecedent. So subject pronoun always comes before the verb. He, she, I, they, we, you. An object pronoun comes after the verb. Him, her, us, you, them. A pronoun agrees with its antecedent. In other words, a pronoun always agrees with the noun that it replaces. And so if, if I replace the noun, if I, if I have a pronoun for Henry, it would be he. If it's for Sarah, it would be she. So Sarah is the antecedent because Sarah is the noun that's being replaced. So that's what's called an antecedent. And then a pronoun simply replaces another noun. And so when you have a pronoun, it has to agree in gender and number. So Janet is fun. She loves movies. So here it agrees that she is the pronoun that agrees with Janet, the antecedent, and, it, and it's she. So it agrees in gender, and there's only one person so it agrees in person and number. You cannot say Janet, he loves movies. So it has to be she. Children are innocent. So here, they is the pronoun that replaces children. And they agrees in both gender and number. In this case, it's mainly number. Okay, there's a lot of children. Therefore, it becomes they are cute. You cannot say he or she is cute. Right. A child, yes. Did someone have a question? No? Okay. A child is innocent. He or she is cute. You cannot say they are, oh, they're supposed to be cute. Well, whatever. Oh, they should be innocent, right? Innocent. Yeah, child, he or she is innocent. There you go. What is the correct pronoun for the antecedent uh, children? The children play with, and then it should be their toys all day because their shows possession and it's plural. And so there is plural and shows possession. It shows more than one child. So therefore, the answer to the question is there. Everybody okay on that one so far? Before I move yes. on to the chapter? Yes. Good. Yes, that goes for everybody. Anybody want me to do it again? No. Okay, subject and verb. So that's chapter 21. So the subject of the verb always comes before the verb. So the dog. Is, and the subject is what does the action, okay? It, it, the subject is the one that does the action and is the main topic of the sentence. The dog, subject, chased, verb, the cat, object, around the yard, preposition. So a prepositional phrase means that it shows time and place. The subject does the action. The verb is the action. The object receives the action. The preposition shows where something is. So the subject, so true or false, the subject of a sentence tells who or what the sentence is about, who or what is doing the action. So the answer is true because the subject 
is always doing the action in active voice, okay? In an active voice sentence, the subject does the action. So right now we're just doing active voice. So singular subject, dog. The dog chased after the cat. Plural subject, dogs. Many dogs chase after the cat. Which one demonstrates a plural subject? The coats were packed away for summer. So here you have a plural subject because you have more than one subject. Both of these still talk about one coat, okay? Because apostrophe S means that you're talking about that coat's zipper or that coat's pocket. So you're still talking about one coat. Because you could tell it's only one because here you have was. Was is for singular subjects. If this was plural, we would put were in there. So that's one big clue. Here's another clue, were. Were is only used when you have a plural subject. So then by, by just having a plural verb, it gives it away. Dead, dead, it gives it away because all of these two are all singular verbs. So the coat, so A is the correct answer. That's, that's how you, you figure it out. Everybody good for chapter 21 in your book? I just did a whole yes. chapter. Yes? Yes. Okay, so we're on to chapter 24. Regular and irregular verbs. Verbs show action. It shows time. In other words, today I went to the store. No, today I go to the store. Yesterday I went to the store. Tomorrow I will go to the store. So when you have verbs, it shows time, past, present, and future. The simple past is formed when the verb ends in ed. Yesterday I walked to the store. Yesterday I talked to my friend. And whenever you have a verb that ends in ed for past tense, those are known as regular verbs. Now, irregular verbs means that you've got to change it. it. It can't be ed in the past. You can't say, I teached the lesson. you got to say, I taught the lesson. You can't say, I speak the lesson or I speak yesterday. You have to say, I spoke yesterday. So when you have to change the verb from ed to something else, those are known as irregular verbs because regular verbs always end in ed in the past tense. Irregular verbs are all different. Speak, spoke, spoken, break, broke, broken. And so when you have an irregular verb, you simply have to memorize the irregular verb list. So that you can Google irregular verb list and you've got to memorize that. I remember memorizing that for eighth grade. How many of you remember memorizing that in like seventh or eighth grade? Even native speakers have to memorize this sort of thing. Otherwise you sound really strange. The past participle is used with helping verbs, have, has, and had. So I had parked my car in the parking lot. And this is known as the past participle. When you have one past action happen before another past action. A present perfect means that something happened in the recent past, but is still happening right now. I have been talking on this lecture for about 10 minutes. So it started 10 minutes ago, but it's still happening. So it's something in the very recent past. That's present perfect. Present participle is when you add ing. I am teaching. You are learning. We are speaking. Something that's still going on and on and on. And it's not a completed action. Simple present tense is I listen to the, the lesson. I speak to the teacher. Present progressive, I am listening to the teacher. I am speaking to the teacher. And the difference between simple present, I listen to the teacher, is that's a completed action. Whereas I am listening to the teacher means that you're still listening to the teacher when another action occurs. Now, verb tenses also show active or passive voice. And so active voice means that the subject is doing the action. Passive voice means that the subject is receiving the action. You're just kind of passive like this. So the students are, so the students are being taught English. So are you doing anything active besides sitting in and listening? No, you're being passive. So you as the subject of the sentence, students are being taught English. The students here, when you have passive voice, then the subject is the uh, receiving the action. Whereas in active voice, the students are talking to the teacher. There, the students are doing the action. That's an active voice. Do you understand the difference between active and passive voice? Or do you, do I need to, this is where people go, huh? 
like that. Typically, I usually have to do it over again right about here. You guys good with uh, active and passive voice? So, um, oh, I can't remember your name. Bertolini? Um, yeah. So, Bernstein. Bernstein, you're going to have to put your name on your, yeah. Bernstein, okay. yeah. Um, what is the difference between active and passive voice? Um, I was listening, but I wasn't listening. <laughs> That's how I can tell people understand. So, here mm -hmm. you have. The teacher lectures the students. Is the teacher doing the action or receiving the action? Doing the action. She's doing the action. Therefore, she's being active, active voice. The students are being lectured by the teacher. Are the students doing any action? No. So here the students are listening. They're receiving the action of learning English. So if the subject is passive and not really doing much physical stuff, that's passive voice. Another way to tell passive voice is B plus a past tense. That means B lecture. So this means that every passive voice always has a B verb plus a past participle. That okay. is how you, that's how you could tell something is in passive voice. And so on your quiz, they're going to ask you, is this sentence active voice or is this sentence passive voice. So number one, you look for the B verb and ED. And then number two, you ask yourself, is the subject receiving the action or is the subject doing the action? And so that's another thing. So verbs show time. Verbs reflect state and existence. That means that, oh, Robert Redford seems really, oh, ja Janet seems sad. He looks happy. In other words, you're talking about the, someone's mental state. Uh, they look happy. They look sad. They look uh, depressed. So that's someone's state of mind. So verb tenses also, also reflect someone's state of mind or existence. So here are some ex more examples of uh, present tense is I shout, he shouts, we shout, they shout. And is this a, a shout a regular verb or an irregular verb? Marisol. I hope I said that right. Is shout a regular or irregular verb? Regular. Regular verb. Why is this a regular verb? Because it's present. No, all verbs can be present. What makes this verb a regular verb? Sasha. Why isn't this an irregular verb? Anybody? Because you didn't have to change nothing. Exactly. Yes. She remembers her second grade grammar. Okay. ED. And so if you were to ask your kid, okay. Um, I remember one time I asked this question to a student, an adult student, just like I did to Sasha. And then some kid came in and answered for her before she could open her mouth. A little kid said, it's because it's ED. My teacher says it's an irregular verb. And we all laughed because the kid answered faster than all the adults. The adults were still thinking about it. And some kid came. It was funny. Anyway, because um, the kid had just learned it in school, had shouted, have shouted. So anytime you have the to have verb in front of a in front of a verb in front of the verb, uh, in other words, whenever you have to have in front of the verb, that's known as a participle. Okay, so here you have past participle had shouted, and present participle have shouted, and here you have uh, more examples of. The bird was run over by the car. This is passive voice because the bird is being passive and the car is running over it. So that means here you have the be participle, be verb plus the past participle. So this is passive voice because the bird is receiving the action of being run over by the car. The car was run over. No, the bird was run over. I'm not sure why I was doing this. So the car ran over the bird. This is active voice because the car is doing the action of running over the bird. So that means it's active voice. Here the car is running, okay, the same thing. The child, the car is running over the child. Here the car is doing the action of running over the child. The child is being run over. Once again, you got the be verb plus the past participle, and then that becomes passive voice. I am being taught English by the professor. So here, I am receiving the action of being taught English. Plus, you have the be verb 
plus the past participle passive voice. Professor H teaches English. So here I'm doing the action, and there's no be verb here, and it's active voice. And so passive voice is is, was, were, be, and being, plus the past tense, run, spoken, walked, uh, equals passive voice. And um, verb tenses also refer to time, and I already did that already. Okay, here's a quiz question. Which one is not true about verb tenses? Verb tense refers to a verb being active or passive. Okay, yes, that's true. Tenses refer to time. That's also true. So what other, what, what, what is missing that I just said? Because if we already know that it does act, that verb tenses can go to active or passive, and we also know that verb tenses re represent action, which one is left? B, ten, verb tenses do not tell you how stressed the verb is in a sentence. When you talk about stress, we're talking about um, syllables, we're talking about English pronunciation. In British English, I would say privacy. In American English, I say privacy. So here, the Brits, the British people, they put the accent on the va, and we Americans, we put the accent on the pr, as in privacy, pri, i, vasi. We don't say pri, v, v, si. So therefore, that's all about English pronunciation. English pronunciation has nothing to do with verbs. Therefore, the answer to this question is B. Do you understand? This is very linguistics. Which one represents active verb tense? The child kicked the ball into the street or the ball was kicked into the street? Even though I wrote the answer there because I'm supposed to be still lecturing. Um, I'm, actually, I'm actually supposed to be telling you this, this stuff. But anyway, so here the child is doing the action of kicking the ball, therefore active voice. Here the ball is receiving the action of being kicked, therefore it's passive voice. Which sentence represents passive verb tense? The car was steered to the side of the road. Here the car is receiving the action of being steered to the side of the road. So it's passive voice. The driver steered the car to the side of the road. Here the driver is doing the action. Therefore, if someone is doing the action, it's active voice. And here you have be, pars, be, be verb plus a past participle. So you know that it's passive voice. Everybody good on this so far? Yes. Okay, so I can go on. All right. Yes. We're done with chapter 24. We're moving on to chapter 25. So everybody good with 25? 24, I mean? Okay, subject verb agreement. So when you have subject verb agreement, it means that when you have a singular subject, you have a singular verb. When you have a plural subject, you use a plural verb. So here, singular subject Jane agrees with singular verb is. So you cannot say Jane are. You always have to say Jane is. Then when you have a plural subject like Jane and Mike, then we use plural verb are. So here, which of, oh, so a verb must agree with the subject in number. A singular subject takes a singular verb. A plural subject takes a plural verb. So which of the following is true about subject verb agreement? A, B, or C? This one I didn't say which is the right answer. So which is the right answer? A. A, ex excellent. If a subject is plural, like Jane and Mike, then the verb needs to be plural, like are. And um, this is in the old grammar book, um, words like everyone, everybody, somebody, nobody, everything, everyone, uh, each and every, all of those kind of words normally takes a singular verb. So normally you would say everyone does his or her homework. Every man, woman, and child uh, needs to get out of the building. So that is singular, okay? His or her. But then these days with all the pronouns and stuff, uh, you would say everyone has done their homework. So that way you're not um, prejudiced against anybody's gender or something, just in case someone is not a him or a her, but another gender altogether. So then everybody uses their in order to be gender neutral. But for our quiz, we're still doing it the old way, the old grammar book way. So that if you see a collective noun like this, then you have to like everyone, everything, nobody, nothing, each and every, 
you have to use his or her. You have, it has to agree with, and, and the verb also has to be singular. So singular subject, singular verb, and, and singular pronoun for that matter, okay? So that goes back to the previous chapter where pronouns have to agree in gender and number, you know, like um, Mike and Jan, they are going to the theater, are, okay? So gender and everything, everybody okay with that? All right. Yes. Gen, okay, a geron. What is a geron? A geron is an is a word that ends in ing, but it's not a verb. Normally, I would say he is shopping, and so shopping is a verb. And it, the, then, but if I use that verb word like a noun, like as a subject or an object, then it turns into a geron. So if I say shopping is fun, then the word shopping is now a subject of the sentence. It's no longer a verb. Therefore, it becomes a noun. So when you have an ing verb-like word that acts like a noun or an object, that's a geron. So every time you have a geron subject, it takes a singular verb. Shopping is fun. Eating at a restaurant is an easy thing to do. Uh, learning grammar is not easy, is not for the faint of heart. It's a wonder how the kids get it because kids are so fast. Their brains are much faster than adults. They, they, they just absorb it. As long as they think it's fun, they'll absorb it. So uh, does everyone understand what a gerund is? Okay, so listening to the teacher, is it is or are boring? It is. Is, why is it is? Um. <laughs> it's just simply a rule you have to memorize because every time you have a gerund subject, it's singular. That's just a grammar rule that I don't know who came up with. Blame it on the Brits, okay? They have so many irregular, like to take all the measurements. We're the only country in the world that still uses yards and, and, and pounds and Fahrenheit because of the Brit because of the British, because we adopted the British, while the rest of the world uses Celsius and meters. So blame it on Britain on that one. Okay, so here we're gonna go over sentence structure. So prepositional phrase shows time and place. Verb is an action. Subject does the action. And so if you have prepositional phrase, verb, and subject, that's a simple sentence. Over the hill, prepositional phrase, sits is a verb. A red house, singular subject. So therefore, a red house, singular subject, then takes singular verb, sits. So over the hill, sits a red house. Has the same exact meaning as a red house sits over the hill. And so a red house, singular subject, takes singular verb, sits, and then over the hill is a prepositional phrase. And this is a very British way of saying things. Hovering overhead at the scene of the accident was or were several traffic helicopters. So first you have to find where is the subject of the sentence. So here, several traffic helicopters, that's the subject of the sentence. So it's a plural subject, many helicopters. Therefore, this, the, the answer is what? Was or were? Which one? Were. Were, yeah, because plural verb takes plural subject. And this has this, so hovering overhead at the scene of the accident were several helicopters has the same meaning as several helicopters were hovering overhead at the scene of the accident. Okay, so I did this, I did this. And also when you have, there were four chairs in the room. So here, four chairs is the plural subject and therefore it takes the plural verb were, okay? So there are some exceptions to the rule where the subject does come after the verb. And this, these are the exceptions to the rule. Normally the subject comes before the verb except for these, these particular um, subjects. So here you have four chairs were in the room. So this is the same thing as there were four chairs in the room. Or you could say in the room were four chairs. If I wanted to, to switch it. Oh, shoot. Uh, put it down here. In the room, in the, the room were four chairs. Same thing. And so here you have a prepositional phrase. Then you've got the plural verb. And then the plural, um, the plural subject takes a plural verb. Does everyone understand chapter 25? Yes. Okay. All right. 
So I'm just going to go over some conjugation. Okay, so verb conjugation. I am, you are, he is, she is, we are, they are. Plural subject, you, we. Take plural verb are. Singular subjects take singular verb is. And singular verb am. I am, he is, she is. In the past tense, the conjugation is I was, you were, he or she was, we were, they were. And so um, you cannot say I is, you have to say I am. You cannot say he are, you can say he is. If you're a native speaker, you can hear that something is wrong. It's usually um, ESL students or people who learn English as a second language, they, gotta, they have to memorize this. Uh, they is becomes they are. I believe this is first grade. You is becomes you are. And so here, which sentence is correct? You was on your way home, you are on your way home, or you is on your way home. Which is the correct sentence? B. B, you are on your way home. And yes, I do know people who talk like this, you is and you was. But I always tell students that if you're going to be at home, feel free to you was it as much as you want. But when you're at school or at work, you got to you are it. You get what I mean? Good grammar when you're at work. And then if you want to talk bad grammar at home. Also, if you've got kids, you should actually use good grammar because you're modeling in front of kids. But if you don't have any kids, you could do the you was and the you is all you want. You know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, oh, I have a funny story about that. When um, I had a father who was uh, talking to his business partner on the phone. And then he got real pissed at the, he forgot his daughter was sitting in the back. He got really pissed at the, at the business partner and started cursing. And he said the F word several times and then said, what, we lost the deal? Oh, F it. You know, he kept saying that. Then when the little girl got to the daycare center, she repeated exactly what the father said. And every, and then all the entire school, all those little kids were all repeating it. They all wanted to know which stupid parent was doing that and who, who was responsible for contaminating the innocence of all those little kids with the F word. That was really funny. Uh, it, it was in a newspaper. Article. That's why the moral of the story is be careful what you say around kids. They, they just absorb it like sponges. For the compound subject, which verb is needed? Samantha and Jacob, ride or rides, the A train to work every day. So here you have Samantha and Jacob. This is a compound subject. So therefore, a compound subject means that you have two subjects, plural, takes a plural verb. And so the plural verb form of ride is they ride, we ride, Sam and Jacob ride. And therefore, the answer to this question is A. Everybody get it? Yes. Yes. To ride, I ride. And it's, it's, it's strange why in English, when you have singular verbs, you have to have an S. And then the plural verbs, no S, which is the opposite of plural nouns, where you have an S as plural. So this is where people get confused. Which statement knows the incorrect item in this sentence? This coat and scarf looks very warm, but the wind seems to go right through them. And so what's wrong with this one is this coat and scarf well, that's a plural subject. Looks is a singular verb. These two don't go together. So the correct answer is this coat and scarf look very warm. That's correct because we look, they look. Therefore, this coat and scarf look. Plural subject, plural verb. Therefore, the mistake in this sentence is subject verb agreement, okay? So if I go like this, it's no longer correct. And so to look, I look, you look, he looks, uh, they look, we look. So therefore, they look, we look is the plural that we're looking for. Everybody get that? Okay. Yeah. Indefinite pronoun. We already went through this already, but I'll go over it again. So indefinite pronoun, everyone, everybody, nobody, somebody, someone, something, nothing. This is all a singular, singular subject, which takes a singular verb, is. Shopping, cleaning, eating, geron subject also takes a singular verb. So nobody is perfect. Every man, woman, and child is in the room. Now when you have correlated pronouns like either, or, or neither, nor, then it gets tricky. So here you got to pay attention. Either, either John or his brothers are at the party. So here you have a plural subject brothers and therefore you got R. You always pay attention to the second subject. 
it, it doesn't matter what the first subject is. So here, the second subject is plural. The verb is plural. His brothers or John is at the party because here you have this singular sub. So whatever subject is next to the verb, that's what you conjugate the verb to. So here this the, the, the verb is singular. So you say is. Not only Joyce, but also her sisters are at the party. Jane or Chantel. Okay, and whenever you have or, that's automatically singular. Okay, so I, sh I should have written that over here. Uh, also singular. Jane or, uh, Jane or anything with uh, the apple or the apple or the orange. Taste, taste, good. And so here, the apple or the orange. So when you have or, it makes it singular. And so singular would be tastes. The apple or the orange tastes good. Now notice this one. If I if I change just one word, the apple and the orange. Okay. If, if I add this one, tastes good. So if I add and to it, then it becomes taste good. And so here everyone goes, huh? So or is a singular verb. So here it takes singular. Singular verb with or, did I spell singular right? Singular verb with or, always when you have or. And then here, anytime you have and, it becomes plural verb and, because it becomes plural subject. And mainly because the apple, you're making a choice, either the apple or the orange. Now, if I say the apple and the oranges, if I put an S over here, then this becomes plural. Am I getting too complicated? Is everyone getting lost? A Little bit? It takes practice. It really does take practice. And then you get used to it. So here you have not only Joyce, but also her sisters. So here when you have not only, but also, it doesn't matter about Joyce. Her sisters are at the party. Jane or Chantel is at the party. Jane and Chantel are at the party. Okay, usually I have to do this several times, but do I have to do that? Everybody get that? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Good. So let's do the quiz. Either Alex or Hannah leads the chorus. He leads, she leads, or makes it singular. So therefore the answer is leads. So he leads, she leads, Alex or Hannah leads, and all the others don't make sense. And so Hannah or Steve is singular. Hannah and Steve is plural. A plum or an orange is a good snack. Plums and oranges are a good snack. And I think this is, uh, and this already, already did that. Okay, so here, oh, here is a question. So do not write verb, oh, this is a different, 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 um, a totally different chapter. So we're done with uh, chapter, whatever this was, chapter 25. See, so it's okay if you don't have your book since I go over it anyway, I forget what chapter I am on. So I'm done with subject verb agreement. So everybody good with subject verb agreement? Because I'm moving on to consistent verb tense. Okay, do not write verb tenses unnecessarily. If you begin your paper writing in the present tense, do not shift suddenly to the past tense. If you begin in the past tense, do not shift without reason to the present tense. So in other words, if you're gonna write a sentence with a lot of verbs, you should stick to that same tense. So here's an example. The gardener breaks up the hard earth, added peat, and blends the soil evenly. So breaks and blends are both simple present. Suddenly there's added in the middle, so you can't be like today, yesterday, and today. Does that make sense? No. So at least in one sentence, if you want to break it up into different sentences, that's one thing. But if you're going to have one whole sentence in one breath, then the correct answer is the gardener breaks up the hard earth, adds heat, and blends the soil evenly because you're doing all of this at the same time. Okay. And you can't just time travel. This, this implies that you, you break up the earth. You did some time traveling, went back to yesterday and added the P. Then you time traveled and jumped back on your time machine 
and you blend the earth. So do we go time traveling every day? You have a time machine? No, of course not, I'm just being. But anyway, so when you when you start with present tense, then stick with present tense. If you're gonna write in past tense, then write everything in past tense. So that's known as consistent verb tense. That's a very common error when people write essays. So here, Dot searched the $20 bill she had hid somewhere in her purse. Which statement notes the incorrect item in this sentence? And so Dot searched. This is simple past. This is not simple past. This is past perfect. So if I want to make this correct, I would go like this. Dot had searched for the $20 bill. She had hid somewhere in her purse. Therefore, the answer to this is this sentence does not have consistent verb tense. Uh, or I could do it like this. She had, I get rid of hid, she get rid of hid. There you go. Now we got simple past and simple past. Dot search for the $20 bill. She hid somewhere in her purse. Simple past, simple past. Then that means, then it's correct, okay? But if I add had somewhere, then that's not the same verb. That's the same kind of mistake that's up here. And therefore the answer is consistent verb tense. Everybody get that? And that's it, all right? So from here on in, you're on your own. There's no more me telling you the right answer. Okay, so here, the dog, it's really easy, I mean, Week, week one quiz out of all the quizzes is the easiest. So anyway, the dog chased the cat around the yard. What is the subject of the sentence? Anyone? The dog. C, the dog. Which verb is needed for the following sentence? Either Alex or Hannah blank the chorus. Or. Is it C? C, yes. I lead, she lead. And they, no, no, it's wrong. They lead, we lead. If we got or in there, it should be uh, he leads, she leads. Therefore, the answer is A, because this is singular. Remember, or, anytime you got or, then you got to have a singular verb. And so here, people forget, I lead, he, I lead, we lead, no, uh, he leads, she leads, they lead, we lead. Okay, which is not true about verb tenses. Tense refers to a verb being active or passive. Tense refers to how stressed the verb is in a sentence. Tense revert, refers to a representing uh, actions in time and sequence. So which one is not true about the verb tense? B. B, yeah, because that has to do with English pronunciation. Dot search for the $20 bill she had hid somewhere in her purse. What is the, which item, which statement knows the incorrect item in this sentence? In other words, what's the mistake in this sentence? A, B, or C? C. C, C consistent verb tense, because you got to have had searched, had hid. Which of the following is true about subject verb agreement? If a subject is plural, the verb needs to be plural. If a subject is singular, the verb needs to be plural. If a subject is plural, the verb needs to be singular. Which one is correct? Anyone? A. a, yes. If a subject is plural, the verb needs to be, be plural. Janet earned first place in the poetry competition. What type of noun is the underlying word? Is it a plural noun, proper noun, or common noun? Whenever you have names, uh, yeah, proper. proper noun. Names of places and people, and yes, that's a proper noun. Any kind of title, President of the United States, Janet, Sasha, Derek, are all proper nouns. And here you have, um, which statement notes the incorrect item in this sentence? This coat and scarf looks very warm, but the wind seems to go right through them. Is the error uh, subject verb agreement? consistent verb tense or standard English or irregular verb forms? A. Yes, subject verb agreement, because this coat and scarf, it has to be look very warm. Okay, so here, that's the correct answer. So subject verb, my aunt makes the best chocolate cake. What type of noun is the underlying word? 
Is it a common noun, proper noun, or a plural noun? Proper. No, there's nobody's name. Aunt Jane would be proper. Common. Common, yes, person, place, or thing. Excellent. Which one represents active verb tense? The child kicked the ball into the street. The ball was kicked into the street. A. 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 A, very good. Because here the subject is doing the action of kicking the ball. Which sentence represents passive verb tense? The car was steered to the side of the road. The driver steered the car to the side of the road. A. A. So this passive voice, that's correct, because here the car is receiving the action of being steered, and then you have be, verb, plus the past participle. Which verb is needed for the following sentence? A plum or an orange? Were, are, is a good snack? C. C is a good snack, because every time you have or, it becomes um, singular. For the compound subject, which verb is needed? Samantha and Jacob. Ride, ridden, rides. Ride. Ride. Yes. We ride, they ride. Correct. Samantha and Jacob ride. That's how you can make sure it's right. Which one demonstrates a plural subject? A, B, or C? The coats, the coats, or the coats? A. A. Yes, because the only one without apostrophe. Yeah, that's a giveaway. Which one is a noun? It was the very first example we did. B, yes. What is the correct pronoun to use for the antecedent children? The children played with blank toys all day. There, them, her, or his? A. A, because it shows possession. Which sentence is correct? You was on your way home. You are on your way home. You is on your way home. B, you are. You are. Which sentence below shows active tense? There are several start times for the movie. The movie starts today. B. B, the B. movie starts with the movie's doing the action of starting. So therefore the, act, the answer is B. The subject of a sentence tells who or what the sentence is about, who or what is doing the action, true or false. True. True. Hovering overhead at the scene of the accident was several traffic helicopters. What kind of error is this? B. B, subject verb agreement. Because here you have several, you have a plural subject, several helicopters needs were. So you could take this again. And um, do you want me to go over the practice quiz again? No. Yes, you can raise your hand to say yes also. No? All right, so yeah. I think, no, oh, okay. So uh, all I'm gonna do is, so next week, you're going to do something on time. Oh, so I'm done with the quiz. So that means after this Zoom lecture, you can right now stop, not you guys, but I mean, those of you watching the recording can now stop and go take your quiz while you still remember everything. Then take a break, and now you can come back after say 10 minutes, and then you can, uh, study the rest of it. Because otherwise, if you try to sit through the whole thing, because we're doing it live, so it's more interesting people stay awake just a tad longer. But if you're watching a recording, people tend to fall asleep after about 10 minutes, usually. That's the usually that's when Zoom fatigue comes in. So now that you're done with the quiz, okay, I assume that everyone's taken the quiz for those of you who are watching it, watching this. So the week two forum next week, you're gonna talk about time management. In other words, how do you save time? What do you do to make time for school? So in your post, you'll write something like, I make time for school by setting aside time in the morning before my kids wake up, or I set aside time when everybody goes to bed, or when my baby goes to sleep. So typically is when one's family is asleep, either you get up in the early morning hours or you're working late at night. So those, so that's how most students answer the question, how do you save time? How do you make time for homework? How do you squeeze in school between work and family? And so next week, we're gonna talk about ways in which we save time by prioritizing our tasks, 
But so you can you can Google yourself how to save time. So you can prepare for a week two forum. So how do you save time for school? How do you avoid procrastination? A lot of people like to wait to the very last minute to do their work. Is that a good is it a good idea to wait to the last minute? No. What if your computer crashes? What if the server crashes? And and let's say it's the last day of class and the class gets locked out because after midnight on the last day of class, are you going to be caught with your pants down trying to do everything in the last minute and get locked out? Your final exam gets a big fat F? No, we don't want to do that. And that just also so how do we save time? That is going to be week two. So discuss ways to, that you can find uh, time in your life to write and find time in your life to go to school. Okay, so I will go over that. Here are some tips. Uh, create a routine, prioritize writing, break tasks into smaller chunks, minimize distractions, have somebody look over your paper, and pre-writing. And what is pre-writing? And then pre and then and then week two, you're going to start thinking about your narrative essay. You're going to write about a turning point in your life. Or you're going to write, I became a nurse because. So that is going to be your week two essays. You're going to write about an, one event in your life that changed your life. So what big event changed your life? That's one topic. Or why did I become a nurse? Those are the, those are two, uh, those are the two topics that come off the top of my head. And then you're going to write an outline for that. So that's week two, time management, and then your first narrative essay outline. And that's it for this. Um, and then I've got a sample paper, and I will let you read all of this yourself. This is going to be your, your um, rubric for your essay. So that means you got to, and when I just have my picture, that means that it's time for me to be quiet because I'm done with, um, that's my way of going beep, okay, and that sort of thing. So, so here you're going to write about uh, your narrative essay, and then you're going to do a free writing, um, free writing outline, an outline of what you're going to write about and which one. So which one do you want to do? I became a nurse because or some big event in your life that changed your life. I have a question. Yes. If I wanted to do the nurse one, could I do um, why I'm studying to become a nurse since I'm yes. not a nurse? Okay. Yes. Yes. You could say I am studying to become a nurse because uh, reason one, reason two, reason three. And then those three reasons become your um, body paragraphs. So uh, yes, somebody else was about to ask something. Monica, were you about to ask something? No? Okay, because your, your screen flashed. A any other questions? No? No, okay, so are you all ready for your week one quiz? Are you gonna take your week one quiz right after this lecture? Yes. Yeah, while, while it's still in your head. And then, because tomorrow we'll be like, what did I study again? No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, mm -hmm. so uh, do you have, if you have no more questions, I'll just end the, um, I'll end my lecture now. Okay. So for I'll the discussion, hold on, I'm sorry. For the discussion for the week, we have to do that one. What does writing mean to me, right? We have to have that done yes. before. Yes. Oh, we, oh, tonight. We, yeah. In week one, you just have the week one forum and the week one quiz. That's it. Okay. For week one. Okay. Any other, any other questions? And week two, week two forum, and the week two outline. Got it. That's it. That's it. So yes. then the next, the next, uh, at the, uh, the next quiz will be in week three. So then I will go over the next quiz in the week two uh, lecture. So I was usually I do it the week before, but since there's no week before this, because before this we were all doing our other class. So that's 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 it. So do you have any other questions? Yes, I do. Who's I do? Larice. Oh, Larice. Yes, Larice. So what, what's your question? Okay, so if I wanted to go back over because I just had to run and pick up the kids, so I missed the last part, um, I could rewatch this again, right? Oh, as many times as you want to. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? That's why I report it. You know, you're, okay. you're actually, I, I forgot to tell you, you're all being recorded. So therefore, after I say, you're, all, you're being recorded, don't mention things like, I got an F, or I got a D minus, or I got a C plus, or whatever grade somebody has, because that's FERPA and privacy. Then I got to go back and delete that other part of the, the, the uh, you know, I, I've had students do that, and then I've had to go back and delete it. And so when, when people watch the video, I'm like, what? 
because when you delete something, that's what it looks like. Anyway, so do you have any other questions? No? Okay, so I'll see you all next week. And I know you're all, you'll all do well on your quiz. Do not say a grade, okay? So uh, yes, Larisse, did you have a question? Another question? No? Oh, nice to see your faces. So in the future, if you come come, 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 come to the um, to this lecture, you, you can show me your face. So I, I know I'm talking to uh, a bunch of people. And of course, Samsung will be burn. Uh, she's going to change her name. Anyway, so anyway, so I'll see you all next week, okay? What day do we see you next week? Next week will be Wednesday, but the week after that is going to be Tuesday because I'm going to, on the 18th, I'm going to be presenting at a conference and it'll be my very first time presenting in front of teachers. So that's yeah. the only day that, okay. that I won't be there on a Wednesday because that's so exciting for me. I'm like, oh my God, other teachers are going to be listening to me. But normally yeah. we're going to be doing it on Wednesday at 4.30. So only that week, okay. it'll be, uh, the 17th. So anyway, so I'll, I'll be so nervous. So I'll see you all. Good luck. Uh, Good luck. Okay. Yeah, good pretty good, good luck, luck on that. Uh, not, until the, not until the 18th. So right now I'm still prepping. So I'll see you <laughs> all next next Wednesday, okay? All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.